Can you put an SKR into the Chiron? Let's find out. Hey, I'm Greg. Welcome to 3D Make It. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, upgrading the Chiron with a 32-bit port, specifically the SKR 1.3. I chose this for a number of reasons. I wanted 32-bit. I also really liked that you could do the UART mode on here and you don't need the extra wiring loom to do it. With the MKS board, I had to adjust the wiring loom and whatnot to make the 2130 drivers uh, work correctly. And with the 2208s, you also had to have a resistor and two wires and whatnot to get the UART mode working correctly. This eliminates it all, uh, so it's quite nice. It has a lot of flexibility. The multiple ways to hook up screens, whether it's TFT or one of the standard 2004 screens. Also, I wanted the 2208 drivers in UART mode, so that makes the most sense. And I needed all of the steppers. So I wanted the dual Z steppers, so I'm using E1 and the Z to do uh, Z1 and Z2. And then E0 is still just your extruder. Hooking up the extra fans and everything, that was pretty straightforward. So to get started with uh, Marlin, uh, you have to do the standard download the from their website. Then you have to load a new environment. I chose to use Atom. Atom is a very nice free program environment and then you into that programming environment you load platform io now platform io is the new uh, format for um, using arduino projects or other 32-bit um, projects so you'll load this environment which then links to all of your libraries all the other bits and pieces that you need to uh, get things working now, once you got it loaded up, it's very similar to the Arduino environment. You can compile it and whatnot. The few little differences, and I'm not going to go into great detail on this one because um, there's been some great videos out there. Chris Riley has put one out, um, and there's many other people. I, I believe Tom put one out. Basically, you open up your Marlin folder that has your downloads in it and you've got your platform io configuration and here here's the key changes that uh, you need to make to get it to compile you need to choose the board type so in my case the skr board is the lpc 1768 if i was doing my mks i would put the specific board type here and then i could then compile for that board type uh, editing is very similar what you're used to if you've worked with Marlin 1.19. Files are set up the same way and uh, how you get to the point of compiling it. So once you do compile your, um, your file, it will then output it either to your board or you can output it to an SD card. This is called firmware.bin. Now the firmware.bin file has your configuration that you've just compiled uh, and you'll put it on the SD card and then it will then on first boot of the SKR board load this file into the firmware and then it re basically renames this file to cur for current. So this is a Tri-Gorilla board. We've got our uh, X, Y, Z, an extra Z if you weren't having the um, Z stepper off of the E1. Then we have E0 and E1. So this is a very um, versatile board. Now, I just wanted to go over the board briefly. I totally, this board works fine. 
there's nothing wrong with this board. It's a good solid 8-bit board. We've got our SD card reader built in. We've got our screen. I just wanted to take uh, the opportunity to try some new things. So we have the hub, which goes to the leveling sensor that's removable, the end stop, the hot end, thermistor, and uh, separate wiring that goes through that to uh, your stepper motor and whatnot. So uh, all of this wiring here, in order to put uh, another board in, had to be figured out. So. I have uh, a wiring diagram that I will be put I will put up on the screen so that you can have a look at that. Here is the pinouts for the cable. They gave us very limited uh, information, but uh, with a multimeter, you can find out a lot. This doesn't have to just be for um, the Tri Gorilla board to an SKR board. If you have any 8-bit board, that'll also work. Um, this will just give you a good uh, guide to how to wire it up and make it uh, function. Pin 1 is the Z+, plus, which is our left end stop. Uh, pin 2 is uh, the signal Z- minus for the right end stop. Then we have our filament runout sensor, 5-volt ground your T0 for thermistor 0 and we have our X plus and X minus. Now uh, the X plus was set to the probe so if you do want to uh, you know put a different board on here you can still reflash it with the source that they have and, and make it work. They use a common ground and a common 5 volt for everything. Whereas normally when you're uh, wiring up a printer, uh, you will run a ground plus your positive uh, thermistor connector cable together. But here, because it's a common ground to the board, uh, you're actually only running the signal wire. Now, I know that's kind of confusing because there's two wires coming out, but they all connect to the common ground. So uh, hopefully that'll be clear in the next slide. So the next slide shows how it's wired to the SKR. So going down the list, the both the X minus and the X plus are connected to the signal pins, uh, not the voltage pin or the ground pin. The Y, we're using the five volt from the Y plus and the ground from the Y plus you can use any 5 volt source on the board or any ground on the board if you like i for convenience of the wiring chose to use these two and then you'll also see that the z minus and the z plus are also just to the signal pins for the e0 um, thermistor um, i've only again connected the positive line not the ground line because again it's using the hub has the common ground between them hopefully that's clear it does work because i have it all up and running and uh, if you have any questions you can leave it in the comments again this slide i will make available on 3dmakeit.ca here's a quick video of the installation of the main board So upgrading from 38-bit to 32-bit, not a huge difference really. The stepper drivers 
is as an upgrade is probably a bigger update than just the boards themselves. So if you have your Trigrilla board and you want to put 2208s in it, I would really recommend it. Um, it does quiet it down a lot. When you combine the fan upgrade I did to quiet it down with the drivers, that I think is a bigger upgrade than the 32-bit board. Um, I, I really like the 32-bit board. Uh, I would have liked to get the screen working with the 32-bit board, but unfortunately, um, the proprietary software on the screen and whatnot, and not being able to nail down the baud rate that the screen communicates, and the fact that some of the uh, commands it's going to send are not understood by Marlin, uh, because they were proprietarily set by Anycubic, kind of hinders that fact. But because I run headless anyway, I rarely touch the screens on my printers. If you saw David's last video, the AstroPrint and OctoPrint combination is so powerful, you really don't need to. I don't use AstroPrint as much as David does, but uh, I do have it. Uh, I do like it. I have it all configured for my printers. But I do use the Octoprint interface to upload files and do all my printing. So losing the screen isn't a big deal. Uh, I will be trying a few more things to see if I can get the original uh, bed leveling to work. But if I can't, uh, it will be a BL touch. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully it was informative. Um, from our stats, it looks like there's only a handful of people that actually subscribe to the videos. Uh, we're grateful all, for all the people who are watching them. But do subscribe, do like, and ring the little bell to no get notified for any of the new videos that are coming out. And feel free to buy us coffee. See you next time.